official newspaper files of the early West record many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. Among them were the four Dalton brothers, the most feared bank and train robbers in the annals of outlaw history of the Southwest during the 1890s. are three of the Dalton boys, Bob, Gret, and this was Frank. Emmett and Bill Dalton had been waiting all day for their return. Frank's dead. Bill Tarley and two of his smugglers gunned him. Did they get away? No. No, Grat and I got him. Why don't you bring them in? After what they'd done to Frank, we left them for the buzzards. As deputies, it's your job to bring them in. As deputy marshals, we're supposed to do a lot of things. Maybe too many. We don't like what happened to Frank. He ain't the first peace officer ever got killed on the job. I swore you boys in to uphold the law. Well, this is what I think of the law. Me too. Here's mine too. I know you feel bad about Frank, but I don't like your attitude. Maybe we don't like yours. All right, boys, let's take Frank home tomorrow. brothers once respected deputy sheriffs, embittered, turned into a band of desperate and clever outlaws. I was sent out to the town of Adair in the Indian Territory to try to help capture them. My name is Matt Clark, and I'm a railroad detective. By prearrangement, I was to meet Frankie Adams here, a shrewd operative for the same railroad company. sitting at the telegraph key was very much at home. But he was definitely not Frankie Adams. Just a minute, there's an important message coming in. I got lots of time. What this stranger didn't know was that I was well acquainted with the Morse code. It read, in answer to your inquiry, superintendent of railroad had decided not to ship 20,000 gold bullion to Coffeyville by train. In order to mislead Dalton gang, shipment will be transferred to stagecoach at Adair, en route to Anderson. Ah, what can I do for you? You know, that contraption fascinates me. Can you take it down as fast as it comes over the wires? Of course, that's why I'm here. Well, now, if it isn't too much of a secret, what did it just say? It's against company regulation to give out that information. But being that you're so curious, it just told about a train being delayed down the line. All right, satisfied? Not quite. What are you doing behind that desk? Well, well. Where's Frankie Adams? Frankie Adams. That's right. I don't know her. Well, they're switching the gold ship into a stagecoach. You ride out and get the boys. Grab to take care of these wires. Switch the gold shipment to a stagecoach. Dalton's know all about it. I'm going after him. What can I do? Nothing. The telegraph wire's been cut. Well, I'll have him repaired and get a dispatch out. That'll be too late, Frankie. See you later. It didn't take long to get the sheriff and a posse. We had to warn the drivers of the stagecoach that the Daltons knew about the gold and would be after it.
here, boys, and there's plenty of it. Good. Pass it out. We'll put it on the horses. Bill, drive this thing to the hideout. We'll cover you. Three of them. The other one probably went with the stage. Yeah. All right, Grant, you're first. We'll meet you at the hideout. didn't get to go, but if my guess was right, they'd still be after it. What's it say? Stage is in the river under 25 foot of water. So's the goal. Yeah, but when they get it up, where are they going to take it? Telegraph said it was consigned to Coffeeville. Coffeeville. You know, boys, we ain't licked yet. We're still going after it. When they pull it up, we're going to follow it. There'll be at least a dozen sheriffs with that gold shipment. I don't mean we'll take it on the road. We'll grab it when it finally gets where it's going. In Coffeeville, where they got that new vault from Pittsburgh. Coffeeville's a big town, Bob. They got two banks there. One's the Condon and one's the First National. The Condon's got a new vault, too. Now, my smart brother, how are we going to know which bank to hit? I tell you what, Brother Emmett. Just to play safe, we'll hit both the banks. The gold was stretched up and deposited in the First National Bank. I had a hunch that the Daltons would go after it, so I convinced my superiors to assign me to Coffeeville. I didn't know too much about blacksmithing, but I knew enough to fit a horse's hoof. Anyway, it was a good front. You're taking too much off the toe. Hi, you Frankie. Rumor has it around town that the Dalton gang has been in the area. Yeah, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. They're most likely waiting for the right time to strike. I got that job at First National Bank. Cashier. Good. That's the one the Daltons ought to hit first. 
It's got that new vault from Pittsburgh with all the money in town. I'll probably be the first one to shake hands with him. How's the blacksmithing? Well, I have many complaints so far. Would like a new set of shoes, would you? Sure. Go to work. <laughs> Oh, $50 note on the Horton Bank. You don't see many of these around. Pick it up down there? Oh, I know, miss. I reckon I've been hoarding that bill for some time now. Got paid off down in Oklahoma. There's nothing wrong with it, is it? Oh, no, it looks all right to me. How do you want it changed? We'll make it four tens and two fives. Passing through town? No, I, I work here now. Where? Oh, at the blacksmith shop. There you are. Ain't been in town long, though. These banks still open at 9 o'clock sharp and close at 3. Sure do. Every day except Sunday and holidays. Well, thank you, miss. Maybe I'll come in and make a deposit sometime. We'd be glad to have your account. down to First National this morning. Dalton gang? That's right. Looking the place over. How do you know? He was talking to Frankie Adams. And if I were you, I'd organize a posse and have it stand by. Oh, now, wait a minute. I can't go around raising posses because you think the Daltons are coming. Well, I'd be left out of town. Well, in that case, I'll have to wire the railroad to notify the governor. The railroad's got money in the bank, and that makes it my responsibility. All right, if you're going to be so doggone ornery. Come on, you can watch me organize a posse. Maybe. Pete did a good job checking over the town. You boys pay close attention. This is the main street. There's a cross street here. This is the Condon Bank. And we'll ride in from here, here, and through an alley here. We'll tie off at the water trough midway between the Condon Bank and the First National Bank. Now, that could be the rough one, the First National. The way it's set up with a steel vault. Emmett. Yeah? Maybe you and Grad ought to switch places. Let Grad go into the First National with me. No. I'm going with you. All right. I'd hate to face Ma if anything happened to you. Now, this whole thing's got to go like clockwork. If every man does his job, does it right, we can go in, hit both banks, and be out in 15 minutes with all that money. You know, there ought to be enough money in both those banks so we can quit for life. Well, I know what I'm going to do with my share. Going to buy me a hacienda in old Mexico, run cattle. Maybe get me a fat Mexican wife, one that can cook. You know, I'd kind of like to get married myself. Settle down in a small town someplace, maybe in California. I'll take the big towns. You can get lost in them, maybe even start over. Let's take another look at this. Main Street, Cross Street. Yeah, who is it? It's me, Frankie. Come in. Sit down, I'll be right with you. Report? Yeah, to the chief. Report of failure. I finally convinced the sheriff we needed a posse. So we set out to deputize a few honest citizens. It turned out to be nothing but a big joke. Didn't they believe you? <sighs> no. That's hard to understand. It's their money in the bank. For some, the savings of a lifetime. And no insurance. The bank's not responsible in case of a holdup. Well, that's a trouble. Nobody believes there's going to be a holdup. They all seem to forget how tough it was to clean up this frontier. Don't take that attitude, Matt. When the chips are down, you'll find them fighting beside you. Well, I hope you're right. But I sure would feel a lot better if you'd quit your job tonight and go back to Kansas City. You're not worried about me. There's going to be a lot of shooting. You're going to be right in the middle of it. That's just where I want to be, right in the middle of it, so I can see everything. I'm a mighty curious gal. All right, Miss Adams, let's open up.
Everybody lift your hands. All right, everybody get their hands up. Way up. Hey, you. Open that safe. Go on, open it. So sorry, but it's on a time lock. A time lock? That's right. It won't open till 9.30. You've got a 12-minute wait. You mean there's no way to open it before 9.30? Not unless you blast it open. It's one of them newfangled devices from Pittsburgh. The time lock is set the night before. And last night... All right. We'll wait. Emmett, bring those people back here. All right, get back in the office, folks. You too, miss. Hurry up. Over there. We got a 12 minute wait. Scoop up the loose change. Don't anybody move. What's keeping them? They aren't back yet. Maybe they're having trouble with that new vault. We'll hang around a few minutes and then clear out of here. There's a lot of it here. It's chicken feed compared to what we'll get out of that vault. Just a few more minutes. I wonder how Grat and Slimmer are going over the Condon Bank. No shooting. I guess everything's going according to schedule. Yeah, everything except us. We're going to be late meeting them at the watering trough. They'll wait. Five more minutes. Bob, we gotta get out of here. We've only got two more minutes. We can't wait two minutes. We gotta make a break for it now. I'm not leaving until we get that money. Come on, we got. 
got to go in there and pull him out. I was wrong about the citizens of Coffeeville when they realized that the Daltons were not just a rumor, they were ready to fight. the leader of the gang was dead. Only Emmett remained alive. October 1892 was the end of the road for the Dalton gang. Emmett Dalton recovered from his gunshot wounds and five months after the raid, he appeared before Judge J.D. McHugh and was sentenced to life imprisonment in the Kansas City Penitentiary. Frankie, hello, Matt. Nice of you to drop in. We thought we'd come by and see how you were feeling before we left town, Mr. Wilson. Feel fine, just as good as new. You telling any more fibs lately? Fibs? Oh, you mean that lie I told Bob Dalton about the time lock? Haven't changed things a bit. Still set for 9 o'clock. All he had to do was turn the handle and it would have opened. Well, you're a real hero, Mr. Wilson. But you sure would have been a dead one if Bob had caught you lying. How much money was in the vault? A hundred thousand dollars, and the Daltons would have got every bit of it. Well, it's 9.30. We have to catch a train. 9.30? <laughs> we'll drop in again sometime. It's always a pleasure to see you. Say, what's the next case you're working on? Well, that's a big secret, Mr. Wilson. Until I tell Frankie. Bye. 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 